Narcissists hate people, but can't be alone. They have to have someone to serve their needs. So naturally, after they have failed at the Hoover, they move on as soon as possible. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to meet the narcissist's new main? Or perhaps you have. What was your experience? This is mine. DB moved on shortly after I remarried. He enrolled both the kids into baseball, and the first time I met Terry, I was picking them up from the baseball field. She was really arrogant. The first thing she said to me was, D.B. is such a wonderful man, as if I didn't know what kind of man he was. I don't know what he said to her, but I wish I did. I knew that if I told her the truth, she would never believe me. She was his proverbial flying monkey, and she turned out to be as nutso as him. She brought with her two boys, the older one of which was adopted by her from her last marriage, who she got custody for in the divorce. Isn't that something, to marry your husband, adopt his child, and then take the child in the divorce and get child support payments for him? Well played, Terry. Well played. The younger one was from that marriage, and this child was her precious angel. In other words, golden child. So D.B.'s two-bedroom, one-bath, mountain cottage suddenly had six people living in it. With Terry in the picture, D.B. made a point of not dealing with me at all. Terry made herself D.B.'s intermediary, which I didn't mind. Dealing with her was more pleasant than dealing with D.B., except for the fact that she never stopped talking. She could seriously go on for ten minutes without taking a breath but she was almost always the person I communicated with when it came to child matters. She and D.B. made for two very dysfunctional parents. They would show favoritism and dangle carrots with no reward. They would promise to take the kids to do something fun, and as soon as one of them did something to displease them, they'd cancel the trip. My children would complain that her youngest was a brat with no boundaries, while the oldest was punished repeatedly and severely but her main focus was on my boy. He got blamed for everything. One time all four of the kids were playing in the woods by the house and started a fire. For some reason, Terry wanted the kids to apologize to everyone at school for doing it, when it had nothing to do with the kids at school. My boy was blamed for most of it, but my girl said the oldest boy was the one who got the matches. Very soon into the marriage, Terry had a baby boy. Shortly after that, Terry and D.B. started having marital problems. The problems were revealed one night when D.B. came home drunk, just like he used to do when we were married. The story Terry told me, which may or may not be true, is that they had a fight and she locked him out. He tried to come into the house through the dog door and she hit him in the head re with it repeatedly to keep him out. He called the police and had her put in jail. She didn't give him second chances, she moved out and started divorce proceedings. It was an ugly divorce, but she did it right. She was ruthless. And she got her child support and made him pay it. So that's what it's like when two narcissists move in together. If this video gave you any validation or value, please like it and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.